we have seen in the previous section what is turbulent flow as well as we have seen what is eddy's viscosity so now let us study layer by layer turbulent flow now what happens when there is an intermixing of adjacent layer of the fluid which is in the case of turbulent flow so for that a prandtl device a theory called as the prandtl theory of mixing length so let us study what is prandtl mixing length theory before studying what is prandtl mixing length theory let us see first what is velocity in a turbulent flow let us study what is velocity in turbulent flow so while studying this velocity in a turbulent flow we know that the velocity is not constant as in the case of laminar flow so what we have to do over here we will plot a graph of velocity versus time where the velocity will be fluctuating from its maximum value to a minimum value and anywhere in between that so let us plot a graph over here that is velocity versus time so over here we can see there will be a fluctuating velocity in a turbulent flow so while there is a fluctuating velocity we can come to a conclusion that over here there will be a mean velocity over here now this mean velocity will be denoted by u dash and at any given point of time this mean velocity will be added with some velocity which will be called as fluctuating velocity and total of the mean velocity and fluctuating velocity will give us the total velocity of the fluid or this velocity is also called as instantaneous velocity because this is a function of time so over here we can write this equation as u which is an instantaneous velocity is equals to u dash plus u bar so now over here let us define all the three terms over here this is small u is instantaneous velocity when u dash is given as mean velocity or we can also take this as average velocity so u bar over here will be the fluctuating velocity or we can write this as a variable velocity now over here we know the equation as u is equals to u bar plus u dash so this is the equation of that entire flow now over here u dash which is the mean velocity is not a function of time but u bar is a function of time so that's why the instantaneous velocity is also a function of time so that is a time dependent variable now in this part we can write the fluctuating velocity u dash is equals to u minus u bar along with that we have just talked about velocity along x direction this can be also represented by a velocity along y direction which is given as instantaneous velocity v is equals to v dash plus v bar and in z direction we can write this as w is equals to w dash plus w bar so this is what we have written in y and z direction so we have taken care of fluctuating velocity now this fluctuating velocity can be a positive value or a negative value depending upon the graph which is over here 
So this is the graph over here. The fluctuating velocity will be negative, and over here also the fluctuating velocity will be negative, and the instantaneous velocity will change according to the fluctuating velocity, whereas the mean velocity d will be constant. So if we have to calculate what is the total mean velocity, we have to integrate or we have to take the area under this entire graph for a given period of time. So to calculate the area under the given graph, we can take this as equals to u dash bar is equals to. So we are taking the mean of the fluctuating velocity that is integral zero to t one upon t integral zero to t into u dash into dt. So this can be written as one upon t integral zero to t. We know u dash is equals to instantaneous velocity minus the mean velocity times dt. So we can integrate this. So one upon dt integral zero to t u into dt minus integral zero to t one upon t u dt into t. So now when we integrate this part. What do we get over here? Is when while integrating this part, we can take one upon t as uh, we can evaluate this part. While evaluating this, we can get this part as equals to u dash because it is the mean velocity. Except there will won't be one upon t minus. 1 upon t integral of this part since this velocity that is the mean velocity which is constant in this term so this will come out of the integration this will be 0 to t into dt so when we integrate this this will be u dash upon minus 1 upon t u dash into t so this t and this t will go away and the mean of the fluctuating velocity will be equals to zero. So this can be seen in y direction also. We can evaluate this in y direction. Uh, fluctuating velocity v dash bar is equals to zero and w dash bar is also equals to zero. So these are the two fluctuating velocities which is equals to zero. Now, what, what, why is, what is the reason behind this, these velocities are zero? Because in the graph which we have seen, the factor by which u dash goes up is same as the factor or the magnitude by which u dash comes down. So it's nullify each other and the mean comes out to be the mean of this entire path. So this is why we get the mean of the fluctuating velocity is equals to zero. Hence, for, for these values where the mean of the fluctuating part is equals to zero, we have to calculate something called as the RMS velocity. Now, what is RMS velocity? RMS velocity is given by the total velocity V is equals to root mean square that is RMS. So, first we have to root, then we have to take the mean and then we have to square this part that is u dash square plus v dash square plus w dash square. So we have to mean all this part and this velocity is called as the RMS velocity. So in the evaluation of turbulent flow, we will always use what is RMS terms because the degree by which the fluctuating factor increases is same as the degree by which the fluctuating factor decreases. So we have got what is the RMS velocity. Now this RMS velocity is also called as intensity of turbulence. Now what is intensity of turbulence? Intensity of turbulence can be defined as how violent the turbulent flow is depending upon the root mean square velocity. So that is v bar is equals to square root of u bar square plus v bar dash square plus w bar dash square upon 3. So that is intensity of turbulence. Now next is called as a degree of turbulence.
Now, degree of turbulence can be defined as V dash V, which is equals to square root of U square dash plus V dash square plus W dash square divided by 3, the whole divided by V bar, where V bar is given as square root of U bar square plus V bar square plus W bar square. This is a degree of turbulence. It is ratio of the fluctuating velocity or the RMS velocity or the intensity of turbulence to the average velocity of the fluid. So this is a degree of turbulence. Now before studying the Prandtl mixing length, we have to study one more short topic which is called as Reynolds shear stress. Reynolds shear stress. Let us understand this part. So, in a turbulent flow, if this is one of the layer of the fluid, this is the other layer of the fluid, the tendency of the particles in the top layer is that they will exchange momentum with the particles which are below this. Now, what do you mean by exchanging momentum? That means the layer, the molecule over here will come in contact with this molecule. Initially, this molecule have a very high velocity, but when it comes in contact with this molecule, which is having a very low velocity, there is an exchange of momentum. This loses momentum or there is loss in momentum of this. There is a gain in momentum of this molecules. So, during this, what happens is there is a transverse shear stress. Now, what is a transverse shear stress? Let us understand this. So, there is some collision between horizontal molecules. There is some collision between lateral molecules and there is some collision between the longitudinal molecules. So, these will be the three molecules which we will take into consideration along x-axis, y-axis and z-axis. So, when there is exchange of momentum between all the, these three molecules, what happens is there will be a shear stress developed in the transverse direction which is due to the which is due to the exchange of momentum between the two layers of the fluid. Now this exchange in momentum was, was found out by Reynolds and he gave the formula as tau is equals to uh, rho that is density into u bar into v bar for a two dimensional fluid for a two dimensional flow now what is a two dimensional flow where the w part that is the z part won't be taken into consideration so there will be a lateral shear stress but it will be in the two dimension. So as we know this, this entire part will be fluctuating and it will be increasing and decreasing according to the fluctuations. So here we'll take this as mean is equals to rho into u dash bar plus v dash bar will be given as the Reynolds stress. Now depending upon Reynolds stress, there is a theory which was suggested by Prandtl that is Prandtl mixing length theory. So what does that say? The scientist Prandtl beautifully explained what was laminar flow. He compared the laminar flow with the intermolecular distances. Now, for example, there is a, there are these molecules of the fluid and these are the adjacent layers molecules. So, he defined there is some mixing length which is along y direction and this is along x direction which is of the order of magnitude of the intermolecular distance. So if this length decreases that means the 
these two molecules are coming very close to each other and the length between them decreases that is if the mixing length decreases that means the flow has transitioned from a laminar flow to a turbulent flow and over here these two molecules or rather these two molecules will both exchange momentum now when there is an exchange of momentum between the adjacent layer or the same layers of the fluid there will be formation of waves and hence there will be a formation of a turbulent flow this mixing length theory was given by Prandtl. so the fluctuating velocity u dash can be given as l into du by dy where l is the mixing length between the adjacent layer of the fluid and v dash can be also given as l into du by dy where v is v dash is the velocity and the mixing length is l over here along y direction so the mean part of this can be written as u dash bar v dash bar can be written as l square into du by dy the whole square now as we know by reynolds shear stress that that is tau can be given as rho into u dash v dash the whole bar so the reynolds shear stress is equals to rho into l square du by dy the whole square which is shear stress of the fluid for a turbulent flow so the total shear stress tau total is equal to tau laminar plus tau turbulent that is given as mu into du by dy and according to Reynolds shear stress this can be given as rho into l square du by dy the whole square so this explains what is Reynolds shear stress and applying this Reynolds shear stress in the total shear stress of laminar flow and turbulent flow gives us a perfect explanation of Prandtl mixing length theory. So Prandtl compared the molecular distance as the mixing length if this molecular distance changes or the intermolecular distance uh, becomes less that means there is uh, there is exchange of momentum between the adjacent layer of the fluid and if there is um, exchange of momentum between the adjacent layer of the fluid then what happens is there is turbulent flow which occurs in the fluid now this is how we explain turbulent flow that there were many limitations to this theory this theory does not give a full picture about the flow of turbulent flow it gives a minute amount of uh, idea how a turbulent flow might work so hence this theory was rejected by the scientific community and hence many more theories are developed in order to study turbulent flow so i hope you have understood what is prandtl mixing length theory reynolds shear stress as well as the fluctuating velocity instantaneous velocity and the mean velocity and the ut graph which we have studied in the initial part thank you